This video features high-end, limited edition collectibles and is intended for adult collectors. That was the longest video. Oh god, it was literally the longest one. <laughs> that was gonna be the shortest one. Was... God. Hey guys, welcome to Toy Chat. This is Max. And Sang. So, this is our third and final video covering Integrity Toys' legendary virtual convention. If you haven't checked out the previous two videos, make sure to check those out. They will be linked in the description below. But this is our final day of the convention, so we have officially experienced the whole thing of Integrity Toys' first virtual convention. And there were only two events today. There was the W Club Luncheon, luncheon, we didn't get food this year obviously, and the final gala, which, uh, you know, per usual, we got to see a, an appearance and an interview by celebrity fashion designer, Jason Wu. So the W Club event consists of Alana Carroll. They interview all the designers on the team and introduce them and a little bit of their background. And each designer, you know, talked about the inspiration as well as what coming out for them. Some notable takeaways take away were like, were like um, Mark, who uh, does kind of like the patterns and some of the Misakis. Uh, he has something in store for us as well. And he was talking about, he's bringing back something that they've done in the past. And a lot of people are speculating it's new fantasy. So that is super exciting. I hope that's true. I mean, anything else would be amazing. I do like his Misakis. So we'll see what he has in store. And you know, Jesse talked about Reckless 2.0 coming out sometime this year. At one point, uh, they were talking about what's your current inspiration. Carol was asking about colors and themes. And Vaughn mentioned Rococo, which is very interesting because we have already recently gotten a Rococo line from Jesse in, you know, FR Maison. If we get another <laughs> Rococo collection from Vaughn, that'll be very interesting. Jesse and Vaughn tend to have very different design styles, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. It was nice, I would say it was probably one of the most active moments of the virtual convention to see all the designers talking at once. It's funny to finally uh, see kind of Jesse's background with the company a little further into it. Like he was Vaughn's intern for a little bit. It's pretty interesting to know like how they got into the company. Yeah, I mean, I feel, I guess historically speaking, that's sort of one of the main values of the W Club Luncheon is as we're with all these other events, you know, you get bits and pieces of individuals and one-on-ones with the designers, with the W Club Luncheon, they kind of bring everyone together and you get kind of this group interview experience, um, which is kind of cool because you can kind of see the designers bouncing off each other and you get comparative experiences. Some of their experiences were very different. And I think, you know, like one of the things Vaughn talked about too was things that have changed over time. He talked about, yeah, initially Integrity Toys was a very small company and he's like, we've definitely added people, which is interesting to hear too, because they're still, comparatively speaking, a pretty small team. Another thing that's been really fascinating for me to hear about, because they mentioned it in this presentation, but also in prior presentations throughout this con, is that when Integrity Toys started, they were involved quite a bit more in the Playline world. Obviously they have nothing to do with that now. And Sang and I have talked about that quite a bit, like Integrity Toys in the Playline space, you know, and a lot of what they did with, I think, Janae, mm -hmm. like when she first came out in her line. And there's other, like there's Integrity Toys lines from the really early days, you know, Never Forever, who has participated very heavily in this whole event. Uh, Wendy, you know, she has talked about some of their prior lines. There was one, I don't remember the name, but it it almost reminded me of like Bratz, kind of. Like they were really mm -hmm. um, like stylized. Remember. They were super stylized. If you do a deep dive on Nevra's page, um, she's posted about them before, but I would just be very intrigued to see if Integrity were to ever re-enter the Playline space. But it's super competitive right now. It just, the, mm -hmm. the space that you see at Target and stuff, it's not just Target just putting toys up. Like these companies purchase space to you know, display the product. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you just willy-nilly throw something up. It's like this space is reserved for this company and there's so many different like rules and regulations and restrictions about that. So mm -hmm. like for a new company or even just a returning company to get into that space, it's it's hard. Alon brought that up too, um, you know, during the W Club event that he, you know, he mentioned that he's like, yeah, he's like, you have a lot more freedom 
with the packaging and stuff like that when you're designing adult collector items, but he's like, when you're working with Playline, you have a lot more restrictions because you have to have product warnings and you have to be considering that, yeah, you're purchasing the shelf space and so you have to think about size restrictions and all just all these different things. I personally, and maybe it's far-fetched in this day and age, especially because Integrity, like they've found their sweet spot with the adult collector market. I would like to see them dabble in Playline. I think it would be really cool to see if, you know, if they ever re-entered the Playline space. Uh, I feel like I don't think they should focus on super, super, young customer bases in that case. I think they should maybe try to aim more towards like OMG brats kind of realm um, and collector dolls, you know, cause you know, as we know as well, some Barbie collector dolls are sold on store shelves. I think that's be, a whole nother yeah. conversation we would love to explore with you guys. Mm -hmm. Top it off, I think you have to consider just their demographic. Cause if they are doing play lines and they're doing dolls that are kind of competing with their adult collector dolls, you, you're gonna cannibalize your audience. I mean, that's the thing yeah. is they did make some cheaper lines, like still in like the doll collecting world, like Dynamite Girls and like the really inexpensive dolls. You have to be careful with that because like now you ha you're offering this really cheap thing, why would I buy the really expensive thing? Or like, why would I buy this Playline thing if the quality is not to the standard that I'm so used to? That's true. I think adult collectors especially, especially like we're driven to make comparisons yeah. <laughs> so yeah. much. So I think that's part of the problem is yeah, if they re-enter the Playline market, I think adult collectors sometimes, you know, I mean, we know, but it's hard to shift that perspective and be like, oh, we want to compare to like the really high quality, expensive adult collector releases, but it's like, you have to shift your expectations when you're going from a $160 price point to like a $15 to $20 price point. So, yeah. but yeah, if you guys want like a fuller conversation on what could be cool from an Integrity Toys, you know, Playline comeback, let us know. But we can jump straight into the dolls from this event. It seems like they were a little bit polarizing. The centerpiece was Wicked Narcissism Eugenia Perrin Frost. I think fans of black and the goth aesthetic, gothic vibes are gonna be very happy this convention. <laughs> black on black on black on black, girl. And she's not the only doll from this convention that had that look. We of course got She's That Witch Sookie, which I loved Sookie. But this Eugenia, I think she's really pretty. I do really like her lace and uniqueness overall. I don't know, I think two dolls in the convention that are wearing all black. Three. I mean, all black. If yeah. you wanna count, Poppy, you know. Poppy, or you well, someone else. Well, if you're talking about gothic style, I think Eugenia, Agnes, and, Spook, oh, uh, Agnes. and, and Suki are all in that realm. And if you want to throw Poppy in there, you can. Yeah, it's a very gothic theme this year. It's kind of interesting. It's, I mean, they had dark romance a couple, several conventions ago. Eugenia, when I saw her, I wasn't expecting it. I don't think anyone was really expecting Eugenia to pop up here. Yeah, it's a lot of black. I do love like the lace detailing and definitely a lot of effort that went into her. Eugenia, to me, has very beautiful full lips. And when you have black lipstick on there, it just, it's too much. It focuses too much. It's like a black hole and it's, it doesn't have to show short hair. She's cute, I'll get her. I mean, I really like Eugenia. She's probably like, is she my favorite parent? Probably. probably. Yeah. She's parent adjacent. <laughs> Yes, true, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think she's fun, but I feel about her sort of similarly how I feel. Now, don't get me wrong. I love She's That Witch Sookie, but I love her for kind of different reasons because, you know, I've mentioned in a prior video that I like the fact that she doesn't focus so much on high fashion. You know, she's more pop culture. She's just different. She feels really fresh and different. Eugenia, however, it does feel like she's very, what we traditionally expect from Integrity Toys. Like she's a lot more high fashion leaning, just in all black. And I think we haven't gotten a whole lot of color pop this convention, which is really interesting considering the rainbow unicorn <laughs> Agnes and all the promotional materials, which We'll get to that, just sit tight. I think with this Eugenia, I like the reason I'm making the Sookie parallel is because with both of them, I wish there was like a sliver of another color. Like, I don't know. I wish there was just a little splash of like red or 
blue or even green. I, I don't know. I, I like. I feel like just the all black er thing is, and especially doing it like multiple times in one convention. It's just, it's a little much. You know, I was actually speaking with some folks online and it's like, I apparently am not the only one who has this opinion. This convention has struck me overall as a very monochrome ex like convention. A lot of the dolls have been black and white in terms of their ensembles and looks. If you guys have been watching us for a long time, <laughs> you know that I like color. I'm all about color, you know, especially if you follow me on Instagram, you know, I'm, I'm just really about splashes of color and like variation of that and pastels. And I love dark vampy colors, but I think when you just kind of wash everything out with like a ton of that, it's a little overwhelming. I think she's gonna end up being polarizing. <laughs> um, and I'm you know. curious what her addition size will be. Yeah, though. No. She made to order? Mm -hmm. or, yeah, she's made to order. So we'll see how she turns out, but the giveaway doll reveal was Charmed Child Ayumi. We love Ayumi. Like, I always love to see Ayumi make an appearance. Um, you know, Integrity Toys doesn't have an enormous amount of Asian characters. Uh, they're expanding. You know, they recently introduced a Vietnamese character which is dope. I think this particular Ayumi, again, I, there's like things I really like about her and all these little things I wanna change. I hate when people spoil things. And of course, again, I, this is confidential stuff, but the problem is people's watch time were so different from each other. You know, someone posted a picture of Ayumi on their Instagram story and I was like, okay. I, my, my initial reaction was a little bit of disappointment. Cause like we did get a Yumi not too long ago. We, did we get her last year? I think last year was the off duty. Yeah. So we got her recently and there's still so many new face characters that still need to make a reappearance. Reyna. Reyna. Where's Reyna? Girl, where, where's Reyna? Where's she at? Where's she at? Yeah. <laughs> Reyna, Imogen. I mean, there's, it's interesting. I, I get it. Sometimes Jesse is inspired by a certain sculpt and he'll reuse it. And I am all for for more Asian characters, but I just my initial like I was expecting Reina because like she's been gone for so long. So I think expectation is something about this convention that's kind of so polarizing. Like you expect something and it doesn't happen, you're disappointed, even though the doll I think is lovely. So Ayumi is pretty. I like kind of like the K-pop, J-pop kind of look to her, and I think people's expectation of her should be a little bit lower. Again, she is the free dolls. Well, technically you pay for the event and you pay for her. They don't usually come with too much stuff, but I love the red hair. You know, Max and I have different opinions on the hairstyle. I like kind of like that chopped, like, it kind of like um, frames her face. My only concern is it might not look great in person. This is one of the scenarios for me where I really like, I, this hairstyle is really beautiful in real life. And this is, this applies to a lot of Jason Wu dolls. But I like it's where it's gorgeous in real life, but it's really challenging and problematic to scale it down to doll scale. I think the whole thing with her cropped side temple bangs, where there's like that additional piece at you know her cheeks, I'm a little concerned about how that's gonna look in doll scale because I feel like it's gonna be really challenging to maintain with just those really small, delicate pieces. And that's you right have there. Yeah, I mean, and you have to use like a lot of product to maintain that. This I just feel like it depends on the execution. Cause I mean, the, the prototype doll looks great, but the in-person doll, I'm curious if the hairnet will mess up the gel or how am I gonna fix that if it's messed up. The promo doll that looks lovely like that. So I'm hoping mm -hmm. the final product. We'll will see look if nice. it keeps up. Um, love the screening. The mm -hmm. screening is a very striking, very unique Ayumi. I have mixed feelings about the hair situation. And again, as I said, it's just, this was too monochrome of a convention. So like the black and white outfit, and I could be wrong, but the hat is looking like it's a reprint of Le Tuxedo Eugenia, she which, might have left, yeah. which does not sit perfectly on her head if you watched our reviews. I don't know, I love Ayumi. I really like Ayumi, so I'll enjoy her a bit more in person. I think the Ayumi 3.0 mm -hmm. sculpt is uh, gorgeous. So, I mean, it's difficult to go completely wrong with that. Ayumi is another special circumstance. Um, she is not gonna ship until December. So there are a lot of delays and IT is not shipping a lot of these dolls out until like end of the month. 
so I don't know when we'll receive these. It's, yeah. it's frustrating because you would think they would ship them sooner. Yeah, I'm I'm unclear how much is still like impacted by COVID and like the 2020 situation. So it's like for that, I, I have to, you know, give them some leeway and the benefit of the doubt. I don't know, it's just weird when it's for like all these other dolls can ship out at this one time and then one or two specific other dolls it, then it feels more like it's like a design, like finalization issue. But yeah, I, uh, Ayumi is delayed, which, um, you know, we obviously want to give you guys a haul of all this stuff. You know, we don't know whether or not it'll end up being like incomplete partial hauls. We don't know if we're gonna have to split it up differently this year. Moving on to the final gala, it was the Jason Wu gala, you know, the final event of the convention, you know, topped off the virtual convention weekend. The final event in terms of what they covered, it's kind of ironic that like for the final event, there were certain things they did where I like they changed up the green screen and stuff for the presentations. I think my favorite one was the poppy one. Mm -hmm. They had like a really fun, colorful Poppy Parker pattern in the background for the green screen. It's ironic, the final gala background was like the dullest one. It's just purple. But you know what? Carol Roth was in her full hair and makeup, so, and she had a great mic. Alon, not so much. We love you, Alon, but <laughs> there was some please, difficulty. Yeah, please check your audio quality in between takes. Yeah, we'll get to final thoughts on the overall virtual experience like later. First we'll just talk about the dolls first and then we'll get into the virtual experience. So basically the final gala was just an interview with Jason Wu and he did offer some insight on his time with Integrity. He did show up what's coming up for him. He did show us East Lynn that came out a couple months ago that we did review. And of course you can always check that out on our channel. He talked about how uh, him in particular really cares about diversity in terms of like face sculpts and the idea of beauty and you know it's different for everyone and different cultures so I, I like that. Ameline? Is that how you pronounce it? Ameline? Let us know. Uh, he should Ameline. show off. Ameline, we don't know for sure if we're pronouncing that properly, was a character from the avant-garde collection of 16-inch dolls that Integrity Toys released uh, years ago and they came with like wigs and stuff like that. It's very different from the dolls, you know, um, we are familiar with today. And she was scaled down to the traditional 11, 12 inch size. So she's not a brand new sculpt, but she was essentially scaled down to, you know, the standard IT size of what we're used to today. Uh, Jason Wu gave a sneak peek of a doll of her that we can expect to receive. I don't think this year was it 2021. I have no idea when. I, I might have missed that, but it's not available to W Club. It is a strictly Netta Porter. Yeah, it's like a retailer, right? Yeah, it's a it's third retailer, party yeah. retailer. I mean, he he collaborated with them mm -hmm. a lot, but she she's available for that, and uh, yeah, it was just like a sneak peek. Yeah, so uh, she looks pretty cool. I think it's a nice sculpt, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's a cute sculpt. We'll tie back to that in a second. Jumping straight into the centerpiece for the Jason Wu final gala, we got Danya, which was, I don't want to say an upset, it was like shocking <laughs> because we were expecting like we knew for sure like in our minds like in our heads we were like oh for sure like the, it's gonna be the Agnes like pre you know yeah. Agnes centerpiece and Elise convention doll you know revolutionary or <laughs> groundbreaking you know yeah but we were, but wrong. We were wrong. wrong I mean they, they, they pulled one on us <laughs> Hot Desire Danya Zar. She is beautiful. I think the, the initial shock hasn't subsided when I saw her, but she's beautiful. I love that shade of purple. In my head, I was like, Shh, okay, so Danya's the centerpiece. Does that mean Agnes is the, the convention doll, like the giveaway doll? But then I was like, D does that mean Elise doesn't make an appearance? Did they Jason replace Wu <laughs> not using Elise? Or like, Eastlin? What? How strange is 2020 gonna get? <laughs> Yeah, I think this Danya, and obviously we have another Danya coming soon with uh, Mothership mm -hmm. for Retro Future, where you know we're gonna review her too. So whenever they finish her, stay tuned. <laughs> whenever she's ready, maybe she's delayed to next year. Yeah, but um, it's kind of bad right now. 
I don't think the Danya sculpt is the best in the whole world, um, but this is pretty, it's a pretty, this is a pretty Danya. You know, I do appreciate the red lip. The outfit is beautiful. It's like a regal royal purple with it's like a train trailing behind her. It's very striking. I, you know, I could totally see using this dress on multiple other dolls. Her jewelry looks lovely. I feel like we're probably once again looking at some reprints here. That looks like Secret Garden. Totally Secret Garden Eugenia. Yeah, it's Secret Garden Eugenia's earrings, I'm pretty sure. But I love this color palette. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's like a yellow and red. Uh, Yellow diamond. Gorgeous thing. color palette. I do also really like, well, I mean, in theory, I like the mesh netting gloves. I'm sorry though, it's just like, it's literally like Jigsaw messing with us in Saw, like putting those things. I've seen so many horror stories and Instagram stories of people like attempting to apply the mesh netting gloves on Integrity Dolls and it it's so bad. <laughs> but so, I'm, I'm, they look beautiful. I'm concerned they're gonna be horrifying to apply, but we'll see. That's something I hope Integrity considers more in the future is like practicality of applying these pieces. Mm -hmm. But she's really lovely. I think the, the outfit is incredible. Absolutely gorgeous outfit. So the final doll, the convention doll, the much awaited convention doll was a shocker to, to everybody. <laughs> it was it was not Agnes or Elise. So people were just like, who could it be? Who have they yeah. not used? It was yeah, people it, it was shocking. They um it was, you know, the doll we mentioned earlier who was originally from the avant-garde 16 inch collection. Um Ameline, Ameline, if we're mispronouncing that, you can let us know. Celebration was the name of this doll, and she is giving very Diana Ross vibes. She has thick, long, curly hair. I'd really, I really want to see this doll in person because the mermaid tail of her dress, I just, I want a closer look at that. A lot of Jason Wu's creations, you know, they're beautiful in human scale, and they're just a little problematic in doll scale. Um, so I, I wish we could see this doll in person. It's a cute screening. Um, it's kind of nude-ish a little bit, cause the, uh, it's she like has, gloss. She looks like, like it's like gold eyeshadow. I, it's really hard for me to form a final opinion on her until I see her in person. I could totally see myself not bonding with her, um, but I could also see myself really liking like the dress in person. Yeah, very unexpected convention doll. You know what, even if I end up not really bonding with her, I hope Integrity doesn't always just be like, Elise from Jason Wu for like every convention doll. Like I appreciate that they're, they change it up. So I definitely commend them for doing that. Carol even commented on it. She's like, I know you all were expecting Elise, but we just pulled, you know, the rug out from under you. And of course, Agnes. We have to talk about that, Agnes, y'all, because... I, yeah, that was, that was like, uh, where, okay, so apparently she's nowhere, she's just like a prototype. There were so many different theories because she didn't appear the whole freaking weekend. Like, we never saw her. We never saw her. And, and like, we, we made all these theories. We're like, oh God, is she like the Style Lab, like, build a doll? Like, is she in the W Club luncheon? Is she the centerpiece for the gala, the final gala, like what, what is going on? In a way, she, the teaser of her on everything, on the convention images, on the packaging, on just all over the place, she's plastered everywhere. So you're like, she's like representing the convention. So you're like, well, she has to have, be like a meaningful moment in the convention. I was thinking like, are they giving us like another souvenir doll, like, after this? Like, I like would expect, like, an extra doll, yeah, like a bonus thinking, like, doll. Because they, they, yeah. they said, like, everything is paid for for shipping, so they could have thrown something in. So I was like, is it, like, a gift set or something? But it wasn't. So, I mean, that was, that was the best case scenario. She looked low-key, like, the best screening of the whole convention. Oh. <laughs> and I mean, just, it was just incredible. Like it, and it was like so colorful and beautiful. We talked about, we have some issues with that. You know, it's like the fact that she's on every single box, which is a beautiful, beautiful doll. I think the problem is, is like, if you bought a Poppy Parker doll and then Agnes is just on the box, on the stand, 
you know, just representing everything. I like what they did last year where each line had a different color. They still have the same yeah. style, but each brand had a different color, so you can kind of collect the rainbow. Agnes on everything. The box is gorgeous. I love the metallic like sheen to it. It's like you're shoving Agnes down our throats. I don't mind, but it just doesn't really represent 25 years. Basically what they confirmed is that this Agnes is going to be a W Club the 25th anniversary doll and she's going to be made to order which is good news for a lot of you out there who weren't able to attend the convention. I am very very excited to see the full doll. Yeah, they did not even show it. They just said this is her. This is her face. You, you, this is the same picture they've been using. Yeah, we didn't see any jewelry on her. She didn't have any clothing and uh, we, just, we do want to mention that she is available only for W Club members of 2020. So if you are a member currently, you can order her. Yeah, you know. so I have some choice thoughts about that whole situation because I, the Agnes looks stunning, like amazing. I can't wait until they reveal her. But that being said, I'm not thrilled about their choice to make her the face of the convention because it's like, she's not a convention doll. And it's like, I understand that Legendary and the theme is supposed to represent the 25th anniversary. I don't know. I think when you're using a doll to represent the face of the convention. And even looking at prior years, like our first Integrity Toys convention, uh, Lux Life, they used Optic Verve Agnes on the bags and, you know, like one of the main images. And there was a reason for that because they kind of, you know, they had a doll in Giselle, Optic Illusion Giselle, that was heavily inspired by that doll. And then at Live From Fashion Week, we had the Poppy Powder Puff, and then they ended up releasing the pink Powder Puff that was, you know, directly inspired by that or like a, a color variant of that. So the fact that they used this doll and face of this doll all over the convention materials and then she's not in the convention. And you don't receive her, like, now? Yeah, she looks stunning. I don't think they should have used her as like the face of this convention. That was a, a weird marketing move from my perspective. I mean, it worked because we were all like, oh, like when we saw that act. So I don't know, maybe it is good marketing. You can let us know what you think of that situation in the comments. I think we should just move into kind of just our final thoughts on the virtual con experience. If I had to sum it up, I would say that I'm very grateful that Integrity Toys didn't just cancel their convention completely um, because I think that would have been really sad and disappointing for collectors and I do commend them for doing the best they could during the pandemic in 2020 and I think they definitely made the safe and practical choice. There's definitely certain things that I wish would have been done differently because they had this really great landing page and this platform that they developed for the event and it was beautiful. And they had this little animation for all, you know, the intros of every presentation that was very well done. But then when the presentations started and they weren't live and they were- It was were... just so many hiccups because like Max and I watch on different screens and it was not the same. It wasn't synced together. Like yeah. you were 12 minutes ahead like already. Like it was like right at the dot when it's supposed to start, but it was already 12 minutes in. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was waiting like 20 minutes in and it hasn't even started yet. So it, it was just a mess. It's not live and they acted like it was live. It was just a bizarre situation. I feel like to an extent, they uh, they did the best they could in the situation they were put into. Definitely. Um, I, no, I mean, they, know, could def they could have done a whole lot less. They could just dump the dolls out and be like, here, cool, I'll see you next year. They had an uh, exhibit hall where you can see the dolls, but they weren't really up there. So they said that you could see the dolls on sale via promo images and video. Like in, like they had the dolls there and they took videos, but none of it was on there. Like to this hour, which is like after the convention, the, they said the Poppy videos were up there and it was not there. The only dolls we saw were Suki and Janae. It's those kind of things like, I get it. It's very hard to manage this, but if you're gonna tell me the Poppy videos are up, it, like, it should be out there. I think it's something like you should be able to see before you make your purchase. It's a missed opportunity and I wish they had kept up with it, but I understand they are, oh, there's only so many people there and they're using some platform that they have never used before. But I'm hoping at least by the end of 
this week they have that fix and I can see what I purchased in good faith. On the same tangent, pretty much, the Style Lab should have been executed better. I think we mentioned earlier, like, the promo images they used were not very flattering. Like, the close-up of the dolls. It is kind of, like, in-person event. You're able to inspect the dolls and make your decision there. When you're doing a virtual convention, you won't be able to do all that, so you're solely relying on them to provide you the images and descriptions so you can confidently make your purchase. Again, these are not cheap dolls. These are very expensive dolls. Do you think they should do another virtual con convention? I personally wouldn't want them to do another virtual convention unless it's out of necessity. So I definitely don't want them to fall into a mindset of, oh, this worked out to some extent this year, so let's just make it always virtual. I don't want them to do that. Um, I'm sure there were international fans out there who were very happy that they actually had a shot, you know, at doing the convention this year without having to worry about plane tickets and travel and somewhere to stay, and I totally understand that, but I feel like so much of what you're paying for with this experience is the in-person experience, and that kind of opens up one of my main issues, which is like saying, I've talked about this a lot, and I know there's a lot of people with a lot of opinions online, but I think in terms of the value you're getting with the price of this con ticket, which is what, like 500 75? something, $575. Do I feel like I got a $575 value out of this experience? I'm wanting to say no, but I totally understand that, again, they're doing the best they could with given the situation, and also you, they need to maintain some level of scarcity and competitiveness for a ticket to get in because otherwise it would be an insane free-for-all for all you know the international collectors and even fewer people you know would have gotten in if they made it like super super cheap this year it, it would have been a madhouse and I think Integrity Toys kind of markets itself on the limited edition aspect of their products and people not wanting it to be ridiculous and crazy and impossible with certain things and certain events. So that aspect of it, I get it. I think you still want value out of your purchase and while it is very true if we're just getting down and dirty and real that you can you know, trade and resell the things that you receive in your package that you're not interested in. There's some people who don't do that or don't know how to do that or don't invest in doing that. And for them, I don't know if they're getting bang for their buck out of this virtual experience. So what I will say is I think they did a very solid job given that they had to change this kind of last minute. But I think in the event they have to do another virtual con out of necessity, which again, I hope that's the only reason they would, because if they're able to do an in-person event and it's safe you know, and appropriate, I, I would want them to do an in-person event because I really miss the in-person experience. There's a lot of things, if they're doing virtual again, that they need to improve upon. Um, I think that, you know, they need to work out the delivery of whether or not, you know, they're saying that like it's live or it isn't live or they can see people's chat comments when they actually can't. I think, yeah, people being able to see the dolls at different angles and in realistic lighting and video is so important because, I mean, that can redefine your purchase decisions mm -hmm. because I think that's the thing with the convention too is you can see a vast majority of these dolls immediately yeah. like you can see it and you see it in person and that can sometimes be a really different experience from seeing the promos and the glam shots and and things look you know. different on camera we had this issue with Agnes last year the thing to the heart like her 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 outfit is a different shade in person yeah. than it is on camera. And that's not their fault. I, yeah. I'm not faulting integrity anymore yeah. because I photographed her. I photographed her multiple times. We're toy, we're toy photographers and I photographed Agnes and I was like, oh, that shows up really red mm -hmm. on camera. And it's just the saturation and how things show up on camera and lighting. But when you see her in person, you're like, oh, she's super magenta pink. Mm -hmm. You know, the in-person experience is irreplaceable. Yeah. So. Um, I do want to add, like, I think given what has happened. One upside, a good change that they did was they offered two different packages outside the main convention ticket, the upgrade and the W Club love event ticket. And those allowed you to view the events and purchase some dolls. Um, I think that was a very great idea. So I hope they continue that, but I still think they should do in-person events. 
uh, when they're able to. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's so much of what you pay for. I mean, my last two Integrity Con events, I would be having a very different response if you were asking me, oh, do I think I got the value? I would say, hell yes. Like, you know, it's like, yeah, we got food and ambiance and experience and atmosphere and you're stripped of all that with a virtual con and so I think that's why there were so many people who were like why didn't you reduce the price of this and there's a lot of components that go into that conversation um, because Integrity Toys is still a company that's trying to make a profit and survive through the pandemic as every other company you know is I can't knock them for you know the decisions they had to make and certain maybe more questionable from customers, you know, certain things they had to do. If it's safe and appropriate, we don't want to push things that are not safe or inappropriate, you know, inappropriate. I think that, you know, people are going to want to experience the in-person conventions again, and I'm sure we will at some point. I think if for whatever reason they have to do another virtual convention, uh, there's, there's some, to there's some on. tweaks they're going to yeah. have to work out. And I think it's, you know, it's mainly going to be reliant on bang for your buck, making sure people are getting a value out of that nearly $600 price point to watch online at home webinars, and also just quality of the digital experience. And also just to do everything they can to keep it entertaining <laughs> and engaging because yeah. some of the digital presentations, it's just harder <laughs> to stay like tuned in when it's just like a PowerPoint presentation. Do not at all regret, you know, participating in this. And we still got some gorgeous dolls and we got some fun, interesting information from some of the designers. Our critique is out of love and, you know, we are very fortunate to be able to attend. If it has to come to another virtual convention, I hope they learn from all the hiccups that happened this year and, you know, make next year a better experience. And I think, I think overall, you opened the floodgates to the fact that now the W Club has an opportunity to kind of semi-portionally attend. I think that's a great idea to continue in the future, whether it's virtual or in person. People want to be included and the company is growing so much, you know, we, they're getting more fans every year. For sure. And I definitely have faith that Integrity will continue growing and evolving, uh, obviously. I don't think anyone was expecting everything that went down in 2020. 20, so we're all just doing the best we can. Even us, like, if things turn out differently, we will be at the convention showing you videos of all the dolls in person and giving recasts, but this is the best we can do, so. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You gotta roll with the punches and adapt. So I hope you enjoy our podcast. Yes. <laughs> so that has concluded officially our coverage of Integrity Toys Legendary 2020 Virtual Convention. Make sure to let us know what you guys thought of the whole thing and the whole experience. You know, if you attended yourself, let us know what you thought. If you didn't attend, yeah, just share your thoughts in the we, comments. We still have a lot of Integrity Legendary Convention coverage to do once the dolls arrive. And you can let us know who you're most excited to see. And you can definitely guess how much money we spent and, uh, you know, what dolls we bought. Yeah, definitely sound off to which dolls were your favorite from the convention because, once again, we will do our best to the most commented about doll in the comments below. We will definitely make an effort to do a full review, um, you know, as opposed to our usual haul where we kind of just do a quick overview. So... Make sure to check out our Integrity Toys playlist in the description below if you'd like to see more videos from our channel and hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't. Thank you for joining us for this con coverage and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.